Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the shop again this week. We're working on Mozmad, making some progress. It's slow but steady, right? This week we're doing a will it run on it. And not your typical will it run. It's not like we're at a junkyard getting something started that hasn't ran in a long time. Um, I moved this out of here. I moved to Florida about three years ago. Uh, three years and two months ago. And I had old Mozmad in here for about a month and decided we we're going to work on my dad's nomad. So I brought his over here and put this where his was. Drove it over there. Not an issue. Ran like shit. Had drivability problems since I got it. Um, mainly because it just sits too long. And my dad was only driving it a couple times a year, a few miles just to keep things lubricated and moving. And I think old gas and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, was having some serious drivability problems and I kind of narrowed it down that he had rebuilt the two barrel on it a few years prior to me purchasing the vehicle from them. And uh, to me, it just seems like old gas got gummed up in there over time and the floats were sticking. The needle and seat was sticking. You know, I'd bang it with a screwdriver a little bit. She'd drive good for, you know, half a day and then start running like crap again. And, uh, so I didn't get a whole lot of driving with it. Um, drove it a little for, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, um, all my buddy's daughter around for their wedding. And, uh, that was an on the edge of your seat situation. Cause you're just hoping it was going to start again when you stopped somewhere or wasn't going to cause a problem. Um, I drove it once prior to that at, at, to a car show and back and it was fine. But as soon as I got back to the shop, as I was pulling it into my shop in Indiana, uh, my garage in Indiana, it was coughing and sputtering, you know? So what I did was I had an old intake laying around, I cleaned up and painted and you've seen that in the previous video. And I had a carburetor that was a good running carburetor when I took it off the vehicle, but it sat probably for seven years or more and on the shelf and the old fuel must've gelled up, put that on here, ran okay, but never ran right. Fast forward ahead, move the car over to mom and dad's, use this carburetor on another project I was having carburetor issues with, and it ran like crap. So pulled it back off that project, tore it all apart. Sure enough, big gobs of dried up fuel, dirt balls, literally balls of, which looks like balls of dirt in a couple of places. And it was just dried up fuel that was blocking passages. So cleaned it all out. It's been sitting on here since since I brought the car back over here. Uh, haven't started it, haven't ran it. So we're going to, I'm sure it's going to need adjusting and, and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. So on this one, will it run? We'll see. Will it run any good? We'll see. <laughs> Come along for the ride. We're going to do some cleaning up in the engine compartment. Nothing ever goes smooth. So updating the fuel system. Messing with a, an old carb that used to run great. So it should run good. We just got some issues to figure out. Um, let's see if she runs. Fuel system. Updating engine compartment. Come along for the ride and see the trials and tribulations that everybody runs into. Not just me, not just you. You're not alone. And uh, yeah. Do some bench racing and talk some smack. Ma's mad. We're one step closer to taking her for a spin. It's getting there. Slowly. Slowly, but surely. All right. Let's get after it. All right, guys. On to the next part. I unscrewed that, all these screws, so I could re-clock this. Get my two ports to sit here and here, where before they were sitting here and here. And as you can see, where that fuel line was, you can't really get in there to take the clamp on and off. This hose is in the way, the block's in the way, the harmonic balancer back here is in the way. Um, there's too much stuff in the way to get the clamp on and off. I'm going to a 6AN style fitting on this, which will be uh, coming out, will be easier to take off, 
but that takes up more room and doesn't even fit in any of that. So either I have a, a hose with a clamp that I can't ever... I mean, it took me forever to get that thing off of there. It was a pain in the butt in the bad spot. You can see the hose. This is the fuel line. It's supposed to come in and come over here. And this one, it's looping up to the radiator, then back around in. Um, does it work? Sure. Is it the best solution? Not really. So, on a, on a Tri-5 Chevy, usually you have the fuel inlet on this side and the fuel outlet about here. Well, my, my new one doesn't really have that, I, so I, I clocked it to be outlet here, and then the inlet's going to be about here, and I'll put an elbow on it so I can just run this straight into it. That's what I'm planning to do, but I need to get this one out first. And uh, this is just me cleaning up a situation and uh, making it a little more usable and a little more uh, nicer to look at. I had this left over, wasn't able to use it on my brother's vehicle. Um, so we're trying it on this one. Because there was no amount the way his heart, his had all the factory hard lines. And I would have had to change it all to rubber lines and he didn't want that. So we got the proper one that the hard lines ran perfectly to. And then I was able to run 6A and braided out of there because it came out over on this side where this one's going to come out. Same thing. It's just this one doesn't have the inlet on the right spot, but I'm going to make it work and I don't care if I have rubber hose coming up and then just terminating right there. Uh, I'll be able to clean it up and make it a little tidier looking. All right, let me get after it. This is just a red scotch right pad and I spray a little brake clean on it. And this usually gets me nice clean surface. Yeah, that's what it's gonna look like. Looking down on it. Got our hose fitting that'll go to the feed, the inlet, and the tank. And this is the one that's a little adapter on there to run my braided line and this is all you'll see from that coming out. I know this sticks out a little far. It'd be nice to have just a, like my brother's, there was just a, I got a quick little swivel 90 that came up and then a straight line to it. So it was sat over more, but I'm dealing with what I got left over because we're doing it on a budget. That's what this is all about. Getting stuff done on a budget, you know, using leftover stuff and not doing it on the cheap and not buying cheap crap, buying inexpensive, good crap. <laughs> and I've got this left over. I've got a here it is. Got a whole, got this much left out of the kit, which is more than enough. Um, I've got those fittings left over, so that's what I'm using. No reason to use anything else. My RTV's seen better days. I'm gonna throw some black RTV. I, I put just a thin coating uh, on the block to hold the, the gasket. And I'll uh, probably put a little thin coating on the, on the pump itself. So, should be good. Enough. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on and uh, come back to you when I'm done. A few moments later. Battery in. Took a little finessing, but it's in. All right. Let's make fuel lines. All right, I got the first end done. And look at that. Oh, it's so professional looking. This part's gonna go into carb and run it down to the fuel pump, and then I'll mark where I wanna cut. And then I'll double check after we cut, make sure it's going to route the way I want, it's going to sit the way I want. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put the other end on. It'll look just like this. goes into the pump. And all I got to do is run a new rubber hose from the feed line to the pump. Bleed brakes. Good to go. Ready to rock and roll. So, we're there, guys. All right. Got the valve cover swapped over. Uh, needed to run these little T-handles to hold the valve cover down because uh, the bolts that were in there weren't long enough. But I had these laying around. And because I'm running those, I can just use a zip tie to hold the fuel line there. So I just don't like it flopping around. I got it hold down there, so it's not flopping around. Still got to do that fuel, the inlet, 
fuel in it. I'm doing that next. Just sizing up everything I need so I can do one trip to the parts store. I'm surprised these fit, but I gotta find a low, very low riding breather for that because it runs into it bumps into the battery tray, the one that, that normal one I've got. So I need a vacuum line for that. A couple of vacuum caps. And then I need my vacuum line from there to the back of the carb and a T to run over to my booster. Uh, from the carb to the booster and then that right there, that hose is a vacuum hose because that can is a vacuum can for the wipers if I haven't said so already. So, just working my way to that so I can get it timed up. but. A little cleaning under here. Those valve covers are pretty dusty. Again, just doing it on the cheap with what I got around here to freshen things up. I'm hoping this carb will be good. It ran great on my 64 Chevy when I bought it, but that was 2013. And I took it off and it sat on a shelf. And I pulled it off and put it down here in like 2020. And it ran like shit. So, but it ran. And then my, uh, my railroad truck C20 project um, had some drivability issues with that, with the carb that was on it, which was a brand new Chinese quadra junk that I didn't put on. And I thought maybe the carb was bad, so I snagged the carb off of here and threw it on there, and it ran just as bad. Really didn't change anything. So then this went and sat on the shelf again for a couple of years, and uh, that's been a book. So uh, I started that truck about two years ago, so about a year and a half. I tore it apart and there was garbage in it. I mean, tons of dried up fuel, like mineral deposits. So got that all cleaned out, everything flowing good. Should run like it did before, right? I like it for this because this was a two barrel car. It's a 71 El Camino 350, came to factory with a two barrel on it. Going to a four barrel is not always necessarily the right thing to do, uh, but that's a 500 CFM metal rod. So it's not jumping up huge. Um, the primary circuit should be no bigger than what that two barrel was. Maybe a little bigger, but uh, you'll have the wide open throttle of a four barrel, dumping some fuel and it should run good. So I want, I want to use this. Well, we're getting there. Lines are hooked up. Valve covers on. I just ran a vacuum line to the booster for right now. I don't need the wipers to work at this moment. That'll that'll get rid of a booster leak or a vacuum leak. Trying out my my clearance item air cleaner. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it with this motor, being that everything's that texture. But you know what? It kind of works. It looks kind of sinister. I had to put a little adapter underneath there to clear the carb. Figure out a breather situation. I got to figure it out for the other side. Like I mentioned, I got to get a lower profile breather or something over on that side. And I'll get one to match this side. And hopefully it'll be, uh... oh, look better than that. That weird chrome sticks out like a sore thumb. This is the only thing chrome in here. And that. Now, mind you, when I do the power steering, I have all chrome pulleys. So, there is that. Oh, and that's chrome. Let me know in the comments what you think. The next day. Pretty much got everything buttoned up. Got the old, uh, got the alternator wired up. Got all my vacuum lines and fuel lines done up today. The plan is, uh, I'm gonna get this thing started. Make sure I don't have any fuel leaks. That's what we're doing today. Let me, I got a battery on charger. I'm gonna throw the battery in there. Carburetor, I got, I gotta put some gas in here and then I put a whole bunch of Lucas. Um, for those of you who don't know, bought these on Amazon. There's like, I got like three of them for like 10 bucks. These work really good. I use, I use Lucas 
<laughs> this is in the trunk of one of my cars I bought. I thought it was fuel stabilizer. It's oil stabilizer. Same bottle. Um, let me grab the fuel one. As you can see, that one's almost empty. But I use it a lot. It's great for stuff that sits for a long time. Um, it cleans. It's, it's an injector cleaner, fuel system cleaner. But more than that, more than that, old cars. Cars that sit around for the whole winter. Um, well, it runs for vehicles that have sat for years and you're putting fuel down the yap or filling the bowls. This acts as a lubricant. It says neutralizes poor quality fuel because it's got some crud in it that makes the fuel viable. But my biggest thing that I've seen with this is the lubrication property. If you've got a stucky valve, um, needle and seat, it'll help lubricate that. And with the cleaners that are in there, it'll help break up any corrosion that's sat. It re-emulsifies gas that's turned into kind of a dust or a powder from sitting too long. And it, uh, it just kind of brings the carburetor back around. Is it an end-all, be-all fix? No, no. But when you're doing a will it start or will it run, or you rebuilt the carb and it's been sitting around dry for a while, which this carb has been dry now for about six or eight months um, with no gas through it. I mean, I went through and cleaned everything and sprayed it out with uh, carb cleaner and brake clean, which dries everything back out. This rehydrates it. So I add this into here. I usually fill it to about there. I put gas in the rest, and then this goes in the carb. That has been Corey's product corner. That's a lot, but it works. This will just fill the bowls quicker than the, a lot of fuel pump to catch up. I don't know how much gas I have in here. Probably about a quarter of a tank in there. It's old. The last time I ran this was about three years ago. This vehicle. Heard it squirt. Heard it squirt. And then I can do a little. She'll fire off. The only concern I got, I got two concerns. I don't have a positive running from the back of the alternator. I gotta buy some 10 gauge wire to the starter. But that's all right, that's just to charge the battery, it's nothing else. And we had that one bad wire to the number five cylinder over here that was wrapped around the shifter that has a little wink, wink, but it's not broken or anything, it's just the it's a little marred up. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. Once it fires up, I'm going to see if uh, it runs like for a minute. Shut it right off and check for leaks. Huh. Dead like the neutral safety switch is messed up or something. Okay. Wiring. Never had this happen before. Fail. Well, that's probably a big part of it. Our battery's junk. Full charge junk battery charger said it was fully charged usually that thing will tell me if one's junk down to 10.8 that quick this is giving enough little extra oomph Need a little oomph to kick it. And I don't have the 
Let's see if that'll give it enough little. A little better. Almost there. And that'll kick it one more time, hopefully. Better battery. <laughs> Too much draw for that bad boy. Let that cool off a second. That wire gets a little hot when it has to draw so much. Need a new battery. The Nova's got my Optima battery in it. But as you can see, at this point, I might be able to lower it a ways and get up there with a ladder, I guess, and unhook it from the back. It's in the tailgate. But I just got too much stuff under the lift to get up to get it. But maybe I uh, lower it enough. I can use a ladder to get up the rest of the way, huh? Because this battery obviously is junk. We'll be back in a moment after this commercial break. A few moments later. Try it again. Manifold's getting hot enough that quick. Started to melt my, started to melt my, which we don't need on there no more, so let me grab that out of there. Getting any gas up to the carb yet? It's only running off of what I got in there, and it's not enough. Like my little filler. <laughs> That's my take it to the junkyard, get her done. Get a car started without a fuel system. Started fine. Now nothing.
check for leaks because that's just bringing question. I know. I don't like being in the car in case a fire starts. <laughs> open the doors, get some fumigation properties. D fumigation. Got to put my board up to keep the wind wind from blowing all them leaves in there, which they do a lot of. I don't know. Am I out of gas? I think I was out of gas. My gas gauge don't work. Got it, got us. There we have it. She ran. She ran. Now uh, on to the next part is going to be fiddling with this alignment and figuring out these brakes. Oh, and I got to run a 10 gauge wire from the alternator to the battery. Oh, <laughs> let me turn around and show you this. That radiator hose swelled up like a balloon. I guess I'll be pulling that and finding another one, replacing it, and uh, maybe the bottom one too. Craziness. Old hose. That'll put me behind a couple of days because, well, like you guys, nothing. I can't just order stuff from AutoZone and have it delivered or advanced or O'Reilly's. And... But she's right. Next thing will be bigger for a spin. So it probably won't be this weekend. I was hoping to drive it this weekend, but maybe next weekend. Maybe we can get all this stuff fixed up and buttoned up by then. Lawn care guys are out there blowing leaves. All right. I don't know if you can hear me or not, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, call that a win. The next day. All right, guys. Got a replacement radiator hose for that balloon we had. This is kind of a, a universal deal because in the six cylinders, the radiator would have been on this side and it would have still reached, okay? So we got to trim it to fit. Make sure these digits ain't on underneath where you're cutting because you could go like this and then you get your finger and you make sure they're back far enough so when you're cutting up here and then it goes like this, you don't take a finger off. Um, so that would be about there. I need to go lower. My opinion is, keep trimming that way. That'll bring this down and it'll be going that way and we've got plenty of room yet. So I'm gonna go a little more. I'll take it off about there.
A few moments later. It's got too much pressure there. See, in the relaxed state, it's above, so this needs to come this way. More neck has to come on. That's it. Should be it. Look at that. Comfortable, no flexing, no pushing up and down on the radiator. Got a comfortable there. That's what we're looking for, guys. That is what I was looking for. That much of the hose clamp sticking out drives me nuts. Now I got a piece of metal <laughs> sharper than the razor blade sticking out. Take a little file. One little. That right there. Sticking out like here. So I got rid of it. The details, folks, it's the details. gen light still on and that wiring diagram I got to do all this. So this is where there's a problem with internet information. I uh I converted that generator to that internally regulated alternator and I, I, I read about five or six different forums and there was one that had a different way and the other four all said the same thing and a bunch of people on the one forum really said this one guy knows what he's talking about and they all rewired their stuff according to his diagram which is the same as these other three guys I've seen. So that's the way I did it. I did my brother's 55 that way too and we didn't get no charging. But that's a completely different alternator. So I, I thought it was maybe the style alternator, the newer, more modern one. Um, I'm gonna have to revisit the old interwebs and see if there's a, a different way. Go back to that one guy and see. I mean, he basically wired it like a one wire with three wires. Um, shouldn't have to do that. I don't like a one wire. You have to have be above like 1400 RPMs before the damn thing starts charging. I want to be able to charge when I'm sitting at a, at a traffic light. I want the gen light coming on when I every time I pull up to a stop sign. So, it's hot rodding guys. One step forward, one step sideways. Uh, half a step back, so. But she's alive, she's running. Uh, Gonna check to make sure there's no leaking and call it a night. Let, let the shop air out. The next day. All right, guys. Another day. Another headache. So, before I left last night, I decided to throw the old uh, Nomad up in the air. And on the driver's side, back corner of them new valve covers I put in a massive oil leak so first things first today I'm gonna go ahead and pull that valve cover out and see if somehow the gasket got pinched or something weirds going on there and why it's leaking so that is what we're doing today to start with and then that alternator I'm gonna try something to see if I can get it excited because it's not charging it should be charging There's nothing coming out so um, I'm going to do a jump wire between terminal 2 and uh, the actual battery terminal and see a lot of places say that you, that's what, how you're supposed to hook them up 
but on these tri fives from a generator to this, usually you can just run the generator wire and that excites it. Um, you jump the generator wire from the voltage regulator to the horn relay, which is your main power block, and you put it on the main power wire. And then that wire goes from there to the alternator. That, that should be enough to excite the alternator. It's not. I'm not getting anything. Uh, or very, very, very little if I'm getting anything at all. So I am going to try jumping from Terminator Terminal 2 right to the battery uh, terminal on the back of the alternator. I don't know why that makes a difference, but they say you can run them that way. And if that doesn't do anything, then I might have to take the alternator back apart. Maybe I did something when I put it back together and the brushes didn't line up. And one of them's hanging in there. We'll see. Okay, so two steps forward, one step to the side, one step backwards, you know, hot rodding. All right, let me pull this valve cover real quick and see why we're leaking. it is. I gotta run a different gasket. These gaskets are too thick. See that edge? This is the bottom edge that all the oil is leaking out. It's running right past here because this stops here, starts here. The rubber ones, smaller ones, fit on this side of that edge that keeps the gasket from bulging in and creating a whoop that the oil can come out but with these cork ones they're extra thick they're sitting that wide I gotta do this because I always want to focus on the back side so this is making an impression into that into that gasket I think for the meantime I'm just gonna tighten the living crap out of it Rubber ones are like 40 bucks. Smell oil. That means that valve cover's not sealing. And there's a weird knocking noise. Ticking noise that wasn't there before. I touch this valve cover over here and I can feel it, the same noise. I ran these valve covers on another motor before and never had a problem. These are the same ones I put on the 66 Nova. Now granted, those rockers are all messed up. Um, junk. But are you, are you telling me these bone stock rockers are uh, hitting the valve cover? I don't get it. I really, I really don't get it. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna take this valve cover off. I'm gonna look, see if there's any tick marks. Um, I'm gonna have to put the chrome ones back on. Ridiculous. Valve covers, not fitting. Small block Chevy valve covers, not fitting. 
Build an aluminum one, it's not fitting. I'm baffled. Those were on this motor when I bought my 64. This is a 305 out of my 64. Those valve covers are on here. No issue. Zero issues. It's a 75 Malibu wagon is what that was out of. In 71 El Camino. You, you telling me the rockers are different? I guess if I put the chrome valve covers back on, oil fills right there. I don't have to worry about finding a breather for the back. I don't have to worry about changing gaskets because he's never leaked with those chrome ones. Eh, back to the budget, right? Doing stuff on a budget. Don't have to buy nothing. That's as budget as they get, right? Except, dad, dad, but I like doing cool on a budget. I love the way these valve covers look. Can't tell. It's ticking towards the front, and that one's got a got a mark there, and there's a mark there, and not much of one. I don't know if that's from when the Nova did it or now. That does look kind of fresh. Ay ay ay. Oh yeah, right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Now that I rubbed it with my finger, the very edge of it's got a shiny spot on it. Shiny spot in the same spot as the valve cover. Unreal. Stupid valve cover causing all this freaking problem. I guess those valve covers are never gonna be on a vehicle. From here on out, it's gone. Can't have anything cool. Dead nabbit. Ticky ticky. And the oil leak should be fixed. So now charging needs to be fixed. We still have alignment issues. Close. Close guys, it's getting there. <laughs> 